Welcome to the Shoreline Conversations podcast. We're taking another quick break from our tactics series. Uh, We have one more episode in that series coming out next week, but this week we have a special episode and we are releasing it this week, taking that quick break because it coincides with the beginning of a, a new sermon series at Shoreline. If you follow the sermons at Shoreline Church, we're doing a new sermon series based on the book Sacred Pathways by Gary Thomas. And we have Gary Thomas with us here today and Kevin Harney, our lead pastor at Shoreline, is doing the interview. They have a history together. Uh, Kevin and Sherry have done a lot of work with Gary in the past on small group curriculum and whatnot. So very familiar with the subject. Who better to do the interview than Kevin himself? We're really excited about this episode. We're really excited about the series coming up. We hope you enjoy it. Here's the interview with Kevin and Gary. Well, Gary, great to see you. And uh, always, always a joy to connect. And uh, we get chances to talk and pray together on the phone, but to be face to face, even in this format is uh, just great, great to see you there. And uh, you're in Texas, I'm in California, but uh, but looking forward to this conversation. And I thought I would just share, uh, really, we're going to have a couple different audiences. One is the folks that follow the Shoreline Conversations podcasts. And a lot of those folks are connected with Shoreline Church, but also uh, folks that are kind of follow your ministry and that you've had a chance to walk alongside of will be viewing this as well. And so I thought it'd be fun to kind of just tell people uh, how, how our relationship uh, developed. And it's got to be 15 Oh, 15, more than that. So almost 20 years, 20 years yeah. ago. Yeah. We were young, young men once. And, uh, <laughs> but we, um, I'll just share that when I, when I, um, back in the days, we're in the middle of COVID when this is being filmed. So back in the days when people could go out in public and go to conferences, we would go to, uh, we end up uh, going to be at the same conference. And I had a, a habit of just finding somebody who I had read and appreciated their ministry but hadn't met. And I would in advance just reach out and say, hey, I'd love to connect and meet you at the conference. And so, we reached out to your office and you and you said, I, yeah, I'd be glad to do that, connect. But you you kind of said, but you know, part of the way I'm wired is I need space and time. I go out and take a run and decompress. And so you weren't looking to spend a lot of time with some guy you didn't know. And uh, and so when we got there, we ended up with rooms right next to each other. Remember that? We were literally, yeah. in, we shared a wall in this yeah. hotel or motel. Um, and, uh, and then ended up going out and sharing a meal together. And I don't remember exactly what you said, but at the end of the meal, you looked at Sherry and I and, and uh, my wife, Sherry and I, and you said, you know, you guys don't drain me. <laughs> you, said, you said something like you, I, I feel like more energized than when we, yeah. than we started the meal. And, and you said, can we do Can we maybe have another meal? And together? We had a bunch we, more. Yeah. We had several more. I think yeah. we almost every day shared a meal together. And, uh, and then also you went out for a run and we went out and did kind of a hike run thing. And, and, um, and then we ended up at some other conferences together and would always make a time to hang out. And then I got a chance to be in, in your home when you were on the West coast. And, and, um, yeah. and so, uh, you know, that just, just, I want you to know that the last two decades of that, that one phone call to reach out and, uh, you know, see if there was maybe a friendship there has turned into something that Sherry and I really cherish and your wisdom, your friendship, your prayer partnership, uh, means more than, you know, so it's just a, a joy to, and, and now we've got had a chance to partner, I think, on maybe your last three study guides. Uh, we've got to partner with you and helping develop some resources and coming alongside of you. And that's been an incredible privilege. So uh, well, it's it's been an honor for me as well, Kevin. In fact, I think you were still in Holland, Michigan, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. When yeah. We, so that kind of helps place the, uh, yeah. Yeah. the time. But it's been uh, yeah, it's it's been a great delight. And I really do think for me as an empty nester, one of the greatest uh delights of this season of life is being able to be more engaged in relationships. Yeah. You know, when you've yeah. got a lot of kids, a full life, sometimes you just don't have the time and to have more of that time now is, uh, yeah. is a joy. Yeah. Well, it's fun. it's fun to have occasional spontaneous phone calls to check in, talk and pray. So that's wonderful. Well, well Gary, it's, it's, we're in a crazy time in the kind of in the history of the world right now on, on pretty much every level possible, but uh, obviously in the local church, you, you, you have your, writing, speaking ministry, but you also are rooted in a local church. And so in terms of your uh, traveling, writing, speaking, local church ministry, kind of formal ministry, what's this last year? How is it uh, all that's gone on with COVID and all that's happened in our world? How has that kind of changed your changed your world? You know, I at the end of the year, every year, I like to go back over my journal and reread my journal from the previous year 
And so I'm reading January. I'm reading February. I start to get into March and I'm like, <laughs> Gary, you have no idea uh, what's about to hit. And then, of course, by the end of March, everything's changed. I remember the big thing is I had a sermon ready to go on Friday and then made the, the church made the decision we, we, we can't meet live. And I would say that having a completely finished sermon and not being able to deliver it is like being nine months pregnant, except for the fact that my wife says nothing is like being nine months pregnant. You know, women are not going to give that up and probably shouldn't. But um, so then travel was way down this year, um, but I was able to do so much more writing. My agent had asked me at the start of the year because a number of publishers were trying to asked me to, to revise books that were already out there. And I remember him telling me, are you sure you can get this done? I go, I, I think I can. And maybe I couldn't have, <laughs> and it could have been God's uh, blessing in that regard. Uh, I'm not calling COVID a blessing by any means, no. but um, it opened up the calendar for that. I did get to go um, to a conference last weekend in, in Waco, Texas, hmm. Uh, Texas tends to be far more opened up than most states. And I got to tell you, Kevin, I, I missed it. I miss just being with other bodies, meeting other believers, just even the things you don't you take for granted, going into the parking lot and seeing a church with cars in the parking lot. Yeah. Um, it's just uh, I, I, I can't wait. Uh, and, and hopefully soon uh, that will be a more common event. Yeah. And I, I share that with you. You know, we're we're meeting outdoors with social distancing. Yeah, I and Sherry that. and I did one conference in Iowa, and it was sort of 90% at home and 10% there spread out. But just being around other people and interacting with people face to face, it's it's the way God's wired us. And and uh and so well, listen, I I wanna I wanna think about this sacred pathways. Uh I, I love the work you've done. I've been familiar with it for a lot of years. When did you actually when did you actually uh, write the book Sacred Pathways? Kind of when did you write it? When did it come out? Yeah, uh, it, it it came out in 1996. So okay. 25 years ago, which is wow. shocking to me. Um, and then it had a, a short shelf life. Uh, I don't know if you want me to get into the publishing background, but Kevin, at the time, nobody knew who I was. It was my second yeah. book. Mm -hmm. It was acquired by a very large house at the time, Thomas Nelson. And I'll never forget my acquisition editor, just a wonderful woman who really taught me how to write for a popular audience. Mm -hmm. um, she called me up to apologize. And mm -hmm. she just said, Gary, I think this book is one of the most creative books I've seen in years. I think it's so well written. Nobody else is saying it. She goes, but we've just paid a ton of money for a Promise Keeper book. Remember Promise Keepers yeah. back then yeah. in the yeah. 90s? She goes, all the marketing dollars are going to recoup because we paid so much to get that book. And she goes, basically, you know, your book's been zeroed out for marketing. Yeah. And, and it was just this, this sadness. And I thought, well, it doesn't matter. And of course, I was naive. It, it does matter, yeah. especially yeah. when nobody knows you, nobody hears about it. Yeah. So it, it, you know, it sold about what you would expect less than 10,000 copies. And then when Sacred Marriage came out in 2000, Zondervan re-released it. Yeah. And some national leaders started picking it up and noticing it. And that's the thing that I really think it was pastors yeah. loved it because it gave them the tools to understand the people in their congregation, Yeah. to, to help them understand that we reproach God differently. Yeah. Um, and then it's just gone up from there. And now it's, I don't know, it's over a hundred thousand. Uh, I don't know yeah. the exact number. I think it's about 150 or something now. So it's, yeah. it's never been a bestseller in yeah. the terms of one year, but, but that's a just, lot of books in the course of a book's yeah. life. And so I would just encourage some of the people out there that, um, to do a curriculum on a book that was released 25 years ago yeah. is unheard of. Yeah. A-list yeah. authors get their curriculum to come out simultaneously with the yeah. book, but it just shows just be faithful. Give yeah. God what God has given you to give. Yeah. It might take decades sometime yeah. for a work yeah. to get noticed, but you just give it up to the Lord and, and yeah. do it. And Kevin, one of the reasons I'm glad it was delayed is that you and Sherry just did a fabulous job yeah. on the, um, the this curriculum guide, which yeah. I knew you would. So yeah. that wouldn't have happened if they'd done it when it first came out. Yeah. And for, for us, it was just this treat of, of, you know, learning and growing. And we don't say yes to every project that comes along because I'm a full-time pastor and, 
I lead an international ministry. And so I got a pretty full life, but uh, anything you do, honestly, I'm honored yeah. to be part of it because I love your heart. And God, we, you know, Gary, we discovered years ago uh, that, that it seems like our hearts and minds wander into similar streams of spiritual formation and spiritual growth. And then I always describe it. And then you write beautiful artistic work and I make coloring books. And so, <laughs> you said that and it's, it's not true. Well, uh, I mean, I've read your books and, and well, you know, some that are just anyway, um, yeah. Well, you're, well, you're yeah. reckless. <laughs> what, what was it? Was, was it reckless? Reckless faith. Yeah. Yeah. Faith. I mean, some like those, Kevin are just as, yeah, it's, yeah. but well, thank you for saying it's that. A, it's a joy to work together. So, t- so, so 25, 26 years ago, and obviously before that, this was percolating in your heart. What was it that happened in your life and in your world, in your spiritual journey that made you say, you know, there's something here. Yeah. And I mean, I, I know the labor of love every book, it, b- book is. I know the time it takes to put into it. You don't just do it because you do it. You do it because there's something birthed inside of you that you have to get out there. Yeah. What was it that yeah. happened that made you say, recognize there's something here that will serve the church, that will serve believers, that will honor and glorify God most of all. I think that what this book yeah. does is it, it releases glory to the God that we worship. And it yeah. releases people to do that. So what happened 26, 27 years ago that started you down this pathway? I don't want to get too mystical. Uh, yeah. you, you know me, Kevin. I have a charismatic bent, but yeah. theologically, I tend to be conservative. So I've and I've done over 20 books yeah. and, and, and you've done a lot of books, too. So you get this most often, 90 percent of the time when I'm writing a book, I feel like an architect. Where do I put the door? How many rooms? How high is it? Is it a rambler? Is it a colonial? You know, it, you're just kind of deciding where everything goes. This book, I felt like an archaeologist. That's mm-hmm. what I mean about mystical. I felt mm-hmm. like I was dusting something off. If you look at the original proposal, it mm-hmm. was just how to add zest to your quiet times. It had nothing mm-hmm. to do with nine temperaments. Huh. And again, this wonderful editor, Janet Toma, that I'll always be grateful for i i wrote to her i said look this is what's coming out and she saw it she goes oh gary this is fresh this is good run with it and so um the nine pathways it was like again instead of me creating them it's like i would go into scripture in the christian classics and i felt like an archaeologist dusting it off and i go oh there you are (laughs) and and i would put it in and then all of a sudden you have the frames and i could hang all of these different practices on Mm. the frames and it was it was unlike any other book I've written in that regard. I was caught yeah. so by surprise. Mm-hmm. So it was uh, look, I'm not I'm not you know what I'm saying. I'm not yeah. claiming divine inspiration yeah. like scripture in any sense, no. but it was, I believe, a gift given to me that yeah. God wanted to give it to the church. I look back and kind of laugh that yeah. he would give it to somebody so unimportant and mm-hmm. ill-equipped mm-hmm. to get the word out, but he is getting the word out yeah. over time. So well, Gary, I want you to know, as I listen to you, I don't hear any, anything uh, that, that no, no need to apologize or clarify. Cause I, what, what you're really saying is um, that, that God deserves glory, praise and worship. And he's revealed ways in scripture that people have encountered him and walked with him. And all you were doing is recognizing and seeing what God had laid out so clearly in yes. scripture, but we yes. kind of, we kind of sometimes just go right. It's like, you know, with the archaeology concept, you know, there's things just on the surface that people walk over for a hundred years and somebody says, wait, there's a lump there. They start looking, yes. like, oh, wow, <laughs> yeah. look what's here. You dust it off and it's like, oh, yeah. there's a whole it, room. Yeah. You, 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 know, you didn't create that. You just discovered what was already there. And I, yeah. and I really, and I, I love that picture of archaeology because I think that as people, uh, people in our congregation, as we, we're going to do, we have a series coming up on this. We're going to do a preaching series on it. Uh, we're going to do a small group series with a new curriculum and take anyone in our church who wants to walk that, through that through it. But the archaeological image of I want people to kind of travel along with Jesus and then to discover, oh, here's the way I encounter my God more intimately. Here's a way that unleashes my heart. And all of a sudden in their own soul and in their own personality, they're going to discover and dust off some things that have been there, but they've never really recognized or, and all of a sudden that will unleash them upwards to give God glory. That's, I know that's your heart in this whole thing is if you know, that thousands and thousands or tens of thousands of people around the world are encountering God more intimately, you're going to be like, well, then that's, that's why I do what I do. You know, yeah. when I, uh, when my son was quite a bit younger, I mean, not that long after the book came out, we got a request to go to Johannesburg, South Africa. Mm-hmm. There was a church 
that had created a chapel around the nine pathways. Hmm. They, they loved the book. And so the corners of the chapel, they, they met in a big auditorium. It was okay. a large church, mm -hmm. but they could create a chapel for private worship yeah. that tried to cater toward all of the, the pathways. Yeah. And I remember it was what the first time I had this cross-cultural communication. And, and you've done this a lot, Kevin. You've done this more than me. And you know you can't use U.S. history. You yeah. can't use puns when they don't speak English as a first no. language. I mean, a no. lot of humor yeah. is, is yeah. really problematic because they, yeah. they just don't get it. And so I'm, I'm taking off after this long time. I'm not sure how well I've connected. They were very complimentary, but, you know, yeah. of course they're going to be. But I just remember, I, I sense God telling me, Gary, there's no greater gift you could give to me hmm. than teaching others how to love me. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, for me, that was, and that's what I feel like people going through the study will learn. And in the last section, when you, and should I write all, some, and one, mm -hmm. uh, by becoming familiar with this, it's a tool to help people love God. And yeah. to adore God and to yeah. connect with God. And in the end, look, we all know this. Uh, I have a friend right now estranged from two of his daughters. And there's been this life mm -hmm. event um, mm -hmm. with his ex-wife. I don't want to go into the details, but she's she's dying. And our prayer is that God will use this to reconnect him yeah. with his daughters. And I know yeah. the joy that will bring him. Yeah that he could now have a relationship with his daughters as they're losing their mother. But here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Our heavenly father feels the same way. Mm -hmm. if, if we could yeah. teach somebody who just felt like because they were pursuing a form of devotion that just didn't connect with God, there was no joy in it. There was mm -hmm. no life. It felt like a duty and a discipline and a mm -hmm. source of guilt, which is offensive to God. Yeah. And to be equipped to say, oh, <laughs> this is how God made me to connect with them. It's not only one of the best gifts we can give to a believer. It's one of the best gifts we can give to God. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and you know, it's interesting. I think as a, as a local church pastor with lots of friends who are pastors, what I've discovered, and, and, and I'll share this, and then I think this leads to one of the beauties and values of how God's designed us and what you've kind of dug up and recognized and shared with us so beautifully is that... Um, you know, in most churches, we offer a single way to kind of approach God and to, to grow as a disciple. And it tends to be, strangely, a lot like how the lead pastor encounters God. <laughs> yes. uh, you know, because, because as, as, you know, as pastors, we kind of think, well, you know, I, I meet God this way. I want people to meet God. So I'll fashion a pathway that, you know, not even consciously thinking that fits me, yeah. but that I assume is going to fit everybody. Yes. And, and then, and then maybe, you know, uh, because people want to grow in faith, they'll kind of grab a hold of that and try to walk that way, but can bump into it not fitting. So uh, what, what are some of the kind of what are some of the challenges or dangers or problems of kind of coming at it with a one size fits all, particularly one that's you know, the lead pastor or maybe the, the a strong, a strong personality worship leader is kind of like, let's all meet God like this. Yes. What do we miss out on when we kind of just try to push people into that single pathway? Yeah. Well, what I, I love is that God needs us to be different. When you look at the temple being built in Old Testament times, you had the woodworkers, the stone yeah. cutters, the embroiderers, yeah. tapestry, all of those things. There was no one person who could be creative in the way that God is, is all creative. And in the pathways, I think there's a fuller expression of understanding God when he brings different people. Kevin, you know this is a pastor. Activists want to turn the church into an activist pit stop. And, and, and they're <clears throat> so upset when that's not the whole focus of the church. While the contemplative said, we, we should be praying two or three hours every yeah. evening and before church. And the, and the, <laughs> and the enthusiasts are, when are we going to have the all-night worship band meetings? And the intellectuals are saying, you know what? Let's have one song, 55 minutes of a sermon, and we're really going to get into the word. And it better be explicit. And, and you know what? All of them have been met in those ways so powerfully, yep. they're so excited. And that's the positive side of it. They're just thinking, ah, um, why doesn't everybody? But here's the limitation. You could take two pathways that seem like opposite, like the contempt, um, like the caregiver and the activist. Yeah. The activist, uh, you know, is, is, is wanting to do that social work out front, stopping mm -hmm. evil. The caregiver <clears throat> is caring for the victims of evil. Yeah. They don't want to be on the front lines. They don't like confrontation. 
they don't think of it as fighting a battle. They think of it as dressing a wound. Yeah. Now, it, it's not just sick people. It might be helping fix a car or a computer, those things. But I, I just tell people, doesn't it make sense that God would create people who feel closest to him when they're treating the individual victims of evil? Yep. And that he would create people that feel closest to him when they're trying to stop the source of evil. Yeah. It, the church needs both. Yeah. And so we're not altruistic. And so when we get that spiritual pop standing on the front lines, whether we're picketing, whether we're meeting with legislators, whether it's all the marches, whatever we're doing. And then you've got the people in the back saying, look, I know you were hurt by this. Let's go away and talk about it. I'm going to bind up your wounds. It's yeah. just a fuller expression of who God is. It, it leads us back, Kevin, to I know one of your great loves, the church. Yeah. It's an expression yeah. of God's body that no one person uh, has devotion to God yeah. cornered. Yeah. And, and the reason we need to be in a church, I think we would shrink our souls if we create the outdoor chapel of the naturalists, mm -hmm. the mostly silent church of the contemplatives, yeah. the rock and rolling church of the enthusiasts or the never in the church building activists because they're out yeah. somewhere else, that that we can learn from each other. Together yeah. we express who God wants us to be. Yeah. And, and as raising kids, I liked it that I could look at my kids and say, you might have a different relationship with God than I do in the sense of how you meet with him. And so look at this person or consider that person. Yeah. I didn't have to limit them to my own understanding. Yeah. You know, the, the, the picture in my mind of a church where if, if you say this is the pathway, this is it, and it lo looks a lot like the pastor, you're going to have a church that with lots of people who line up with the pastor, who learn like the pastor, who celebrate like the pastor, uh, but lots of the people come and just go, this place isn't for me. There's not, there's not right. room for me yes. to be. There's to nobody with... there like me. Yes. Yeah. Cause yeah. if they go, I'm coming here, I want to meet with God and you're not giving me a, a, a natural way to do that. And so it's not that in every worship service, you can, you know, segment out a ninth of the time for each pathway. And that's not yeah. at all what you're it's advocating. It's never going to happen. No. Um, but an awareness of that and it being tuned into that has really, uh, we, we just in our, in our services, uh, we're doing outdoor services and then live streaming. Probably 85 to 90 percent of our church is online still, but we still have a couple of services on campus. It's wonderful to preach to people who are right there, and we have cars in the parking lot that they're being preached to, uh, with people in the cars. Um, and so, uh, uh, but it there, there's just a sense that um, as a congregation, um, we've got people from different backgrounds and different walks of life. So we started doing something where. Um, this after the uh, after the time that we we don't take we don't pass offering plates anymore right now, but we have a time for offering. So what we do is we actually have people sit down. It used to be we'd stand up and sing a song, sit down, and our worship team will lead in a song, maybe some reflection, share something devotional, and have kind of this moment of quiet in the service. And there's people that are just kind of like, finally, oh, this is just you know they're, they're just they're just they're, because because their their pathway. And their way of connecting with God, that that is meeting something within them. So we're trying to kind of have these touch points where people can say, uh, that, you know, this this all drives me closer to Jesus in some way, but that really connects for me. Well, and, it, and so that's been fun to see as we've been trying to incorporate it, it's made me a better pastor and our church a better church by being attentive to these different ways that people connect with God. Lisa, I experienced that with Shoreline just a week ago. Um, you know, we've been out there. We feel connected with you. And the week, the day of the riots on yeah. Capitol Hill, uh, in that evening, Lisa and I, I, I look, I didn't want to watch silly TV. I didn't want to read it. I needed a church service. And here you were. You're doing it. And it was perfect timing because it was, I think, 6.15 your time, yeah. May, 8.15 hours. I'm in Texas. And I, I just did it. And look, the, the music was great. You have a very gifted worship team. But I just really wanted to hear the word, yeah. um, and it was just great having that in the background. And then you guys go into to um, communion, yeah. and I'll confess, Kevin, we we didn't do that. We hadn't gathered the elements at home at that point. We do not because I had I had received in my soul what I needed to yeah. receive, and that's exactly what you're saying. Some people were probably, man, I just need to worship and sing those songs. Yeah. Some people were like. Ugh. Remind me that God has got this, which your sermon did. And yeah. then some, I, I need communion to get me going. Yeah. Um, and, and so for us, that was a picture of, and, and that's really the point of the pathway is just knowing what you need when you're spiritually hungry. Yeah. So you look for the things of the Lord. Look, this will, this will fill my soul. Yeah. If my yeah. mind is disturbed, 
this will bring peace. If I'm scattered because of the fear, the uncertainty, the chaos, this will center my my thoughts on yeah. the truth of God, the strength of God, the character. And for me, a sermon on who God is, yeah. when our leaders of all stripes yeah. and followers are going crazy, yeah. it's like, you know yeah. what? I worship the king. Yeah. I serve yeah. the king. I'm yeah. identified by the king, King yeah. Jesus. And he is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning <laughs> the and the end. Yes. Yeah, and what's beautiful, Gary, is you know my, you know, I'm I'm wired for it. I I've done lots of audible changes at the line this last year when things have been going on in the world, but I plan a full year out with my preaching. So we had that uh that text and that um, you know, our series for the whole year on the nights of worship is what's in the name. And so we're looking at the names of God, and that we had planned from the very beginning. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Well, when the world's on, going crazy. You got to know, you got to remember. And so, and I felt like in that service, we probably touched meaningfully on maybe four or five different pathways so that hopefully everyone had a touch point to really meet with Jesus. But any Christian who wanted to learn and grow could, but we tried to give easy access to as many people as possible. And so, you know, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking, I'm sure you've had just gotten, you know, letters, feedback, conversations with people. Uh, you know, you, you're talking in your book about not nine different pathways. I'll be preaching on those nine pathways coming up at our church here when this podcast goes out, um, which I'm incredibly excited about doing. I think our church is going to just love this. Uh, we had you come in and do a, a Sacred Pathways a weekend for us one time, but in terms of an extended preaching That's series, yeah. this is the first time we're doing it. That was some years ago. And and uh, and so I'd love to hear from you just a story as you think about um, different people you've talked to who maybe they, they began to read the book or think about this topic, and all of a sudden, they just were kind of unleashed into, oh, that's that's me. Yeah. I'm this activist. I'm I'm this. I'm, I'm you know. I have kind of a kind of a pathway of wonder, a pathway of of action, and and this is my this is my. Um, you know, I'm an ascetic. I didn't even know what that. I didn't even, don't know what that means, but that's me. T tell a story about somebody who who started learning about this and had this kind of this light come on, and it it just invigorated their spiritual journey. Yeah, the most surprising to me, Kevin, that that led me a little bit in awe was this nationally known pastor at the time, really known for strategic approach. Um, and he was leading a pastor's conference through sacred pathways. And he talked about reading the book. And he said, when he got to the chapter on the activists, he just cringed because he said, in my ideal self, I'm a desert father. I'm like the contemplative. Yeah. But I said to myself, who am I kidding? I want to fly over mm -hmm. the desert and tell the church to get off its butt. Yeah. He said a, a desert father probably never used the word but. And then he had, in fact, a desert father probably doesn't even have a but. He's been fasting so long. And I mean, he, he was a funny talker and you see him take your material and go further with it maybe than you can. But here I thought he was a guy that a lot of people in our generation looked up to mm -hmm. and were inspired by. And yet he's speaking of his envy of, man, I just I, I'm not who I would like to be in my ideal self. And it was so eye-opening to me that I thought, boy, if he feels that way, how much all of us feel that way, that some people say they're not right with the Lord if they don't have an hour of really walking away prayer. And I know Sherry has some of those episodes with her book, you know, Praying With Your Eyes Wide Open are powerful. And then some people say, well, I rarely pray 15 minutes, but I rarely go 15 minutes without praying. Yeah. And and I don't know that there's one way that's better than another. The two things I've consistently heard going from the micro to the macro, they feel a new sense of freedom. Mm -hmm. I can be who God created me to be. And second, a new sense of community. Yeah. That's why he always wants us to stop talking, not sing, and get into the Bible study. That's why they want to get rid of the Bible study and just have people with guitars. That's why they just want to sit and pray for each other. And and it was th the small groups that could say, okay, now I get it. I just never understood why they're always pushing for that. They didn't have labels for the pathways, but yeah. they saw them demonstrated in other small group people's requests. And so I would say individual freedom – and, and community understanding are the two things that I think your church is going to experience as people go through yeah. these. Yeah, good. And, you know, we're not going to today, we're not going to try to break down the nine pathways because we'll be doing that in the sermon series ahead. And for list, your listeners that maybe maybe some people that, that follow you and this isn't one of your books they're familiar with, 
Um, I want them just to look and say, I want to go explore what those pathways are. I want to say to those folks uh, that aren't kind of walking with us shoreline through this, so we're going to encourage people to get the book and to do small group studies and all that. But for other people that aren't part of shoreline, I would say just getting the book and reading through those pathways is this kind of eye opening. Oh, so you'll, you'll read, look at one pathway and you'll go, yeah, that is just not me at all. That is not for me. As a matter of fact, I think it's got a little bit silly and fluffy or whatever. That, that's okay. We'll, and we'll talk at the end of our time about embracing and blessing everyone on their pathway. But then you'll hit other ones and you'll go, well, that looks interesting. I could explore that and kind of have fun. You know, check that. And the other ones you're going to go, boom, that's how I might, that's my natural pathway. When I walk yeah. that, I just, it just propels me into the presence of my God to love Jesus, to, to feel like a presence of the spirit upon me. And so, you know, praise God that, it's not one size for how boring would the world be yes. if everyone uh, ever, everyone approached God the same way and everyone came at everything the same way. I, I was thinking about like, uh, and I don't know if this is an illustration you used or just that one was in my mind, but I thought if you went to an ice cream place and they said, well, what are your flavors? And they say vanilla, which is, which is still the most popular flavor. No, right. Um, I've read that. But if they said, you know, vanilla and that's it. And you know, 31 flavors, you know, Bass Robbins advertised there's 31 different flavors. There's something for everybody. We'd go on. My dad always liked the coffee flavored ice cream, chocolate coffee, which I didn't like at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like chocolate. My sister liked pralines and cream. But it's like you know, with with these different pathways, we're we're all we're all gonna we all want to encounter God, but He's made us differently. Why wouldn't we then find a pathway that fit you know that naturally drew us into the presence of the of the one we love? And so um, the the church too often, Kevin, has been God is delicious as long as you like vanilla. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if you yeah, exactly. don't, you're in trouble. And so yeah. your analogy is, you know what? There are a lot of different flavors when it comes to personal devotion. And of course, we're talking, Kevin, I think people know just from knowing us, there's only one way to God, and that's through yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. He is yeah. the way, the truth, life. There is yeah. no other way. Yeah. We're not talking yeah. about different pathways. Not, so, not salvation. This is in, it, encounter. This yeah. is expressing our personal devotion yeah. Yeah. through Jesus. Yeah, yeah. There's one way to come to Jesus. There's many ways to then in an ongoing way encounter this God that we've come to through yes. faith in Jesus yes. alone. Yes. Yeah. And so, and, and you know, it's funny, Gary, you and I both, we, and we have some, you know, we have some offline conversations that are very rich for me uh, about how in our world today, you have to cir circle back and explain, I'm not saying that. I know. <laughs> I'm saying this. It's, 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 and, uh, and that's, and that's, that's what it is. And so, you know, we both believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no way to the father except through him. But when you know him, there's many ways yes. you can encounter him, and he's designed us that way, and we celebrate that. So, yeah. uh, so, so Gary, give us a snapshot, uh, kind of a window into you, since I've got you here, and, and you wrote the book, and God kind of helped you unearth some of these kind of ideas. Uh, give me a snapshot of, of kind of your, you know, maybe a primary pathway for you, hmm. and and maybe how that has, can, I think even over years and with different life experiences, that can maybe, you can kind of shift to a different, it's not like I'm this yeah, pathway for all yeah, my life. Yeah. So kind of a pathway now, and have you had a journey of that in your own life? Yeah. It's interesting. When the kids were young, we lived in Northern Virginia, and I think my primary pathway was the naturalist. Yeah. It was just, I was in the offices. We lived in a small little townhouse and, and going to walks on this battlefield. And in Northern Virginia, they have this richness, like, but you just take it for granted because it's in the backyard. I, I had a mile, an hour and a half walk where I wouldn't see anybody. And it was just beautiful. And it was a frustrating time. We had almost no money, a lot of responsibility, vocational frustration. But I remember saying one time, I could be a billionaire and couldn't be more content than I am right now because this is the view made by God that I don't own, but I get to enjoy it. Yeah. I could meet with God. I, I remember one Christmas Eve, I went out there just a little bit before the hustle and bustle. And unusually, snow came in Northern Virginia on that Christmas Eve. And it was the kind of snow that was going horizontal. The wind was blowing. Mm. It was just for a brief, it was just stunning to me. Yeah. Um, but I think as I've gotten older now, I would say I hit very hard the intellectual that's mm -hmm. a conceptual view of connecting with God. My primary quiet times, I'm in scripture. Yeah. I'm reading a Christian classic. I'm reading a devotional book, praying in between. By devotional, I mean contemporary book. Excuse me. Listening mm -hmm. to other sermons like I did with you or Wednesday. If mm -hmm. I'm really spiritually thirsty for me, it's unlock my mind yep. to open up my heart. Thinking of God as the alpha or omega even mm -hmm. though it was a sermon that you gave, it wasn't primarily intellectual. I adored God. I found hope in God. Mm -hmm. I found yeah. courage in God. I mean, it, it did all of this heart stuff. Yeah. Um, 
I do have a bit of the traditionalist in me where I like some of the rituals of traditionalists and the ascetic where you wouldn't be surprised. I need to get alone or I feel drained by other people. Yeah. I, I'm probably last the enthusiast in, in one way where you tend to have more of a, a relational faith. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the bottom line is what we as believers long for is to be intimate with this God who made us and we want to know him more and love him more and see his face and and hear you know feel his leading and his direct I mean that's what we long for and as leaders in the church we long to help other people encounter God and so all this is is saying okay if that's the longing of your heart then find a way that unleashes that very thing you long for and here's the beauty God longs for that too he's longing for yes. you to come to him and connect with him and so he's given these ways and, and what we have to do is then help people discover them and, and develop those. And I'm again, I'm so excited to walk through a journey with, uh, we're going to spend an entire month uh, as a congregation in this. And then also, I don't know if I shared this with you, but we're going to spend six months with our entire church staff walking through this. And we actually used a survey tool that uh, that my, my wife took from your work and kind of kind of shaped a little I bit. I saw that. It's and, fantastic. Well, good. And so we, we use that with our staff. So what we're going to do is staff members with each of the nine pathways will do some teaching on that pathway out of their own journey. So they'll be able to, to, to instead of me saying, you know, this really isn't my approach, but some people do it this way. Somebody says, this is how I meet Jesus. And they get to tell it from their, their perspective. And so my wife, Sherry, is designing a, a six-month experience with our entire staff walking through the book and walking through the pathways. And so, um, you know, we're, we're deeply appreciative just for what your work is going to bring to our, our congregation and our staff and excited for the this year ahead in a year where there's, you know, not a lot, you know, things in the past that were difficult and challenges ahead. It's important. I think that we keep identifying what are those steps we can keep taking forward that are hope filled Christ seeking. And I think every, I think people need to have a, a vision of God and a, and a, and a trust in, in where God's taking us that, that keeps them from getting despondent and discouraged because there's a lot of that going on right now. And, yeah. and, and your, your work and this journey for us as a church is one of those things that's going to help propel us into the new year. So um, a, co a couple other quick thoughts, and I, I want to just kind of run by you here. Um, what, uh, when you think about uh, a church ministry and a, a children's leader or a youth leader or a, or a pastor, whether they're a volunteer or a, a staff person, um, how can a greater awareness of the pathways make a, a leader in the church, whether it's a board member, a volunteer Sunday school teacher, a pastor, how can knowing the pathways help us be more effective in leading the church forward. Yeah. What I did as a parent, uh, you know, I would travel some with my kids when we could, we'd have a trip, but I just still remember sitting in a restaurant with Graham, just talking about how's your time with the Lord been. And as he would come back, I'm, I'm running through the nine pathways in my mind. Mm -hmm. Well, if you tried this, or if you thought about this or that really aware when God told David, you're not going to build my temple. Solomon is. Yeah that God was telling a father, your son will worship me differently than you did. Mm -hmm. You went out mm -hmm. to battle. He's going to yeah. kill bulls, right? Yeah. You, yeah. you killed the Philistines. He's going to kill bulls. And, and God received that. It was an entirely different form of worship. And I, I didn't want to hold my kids to that. But yeah. then I would talk to them. I remember Allison one time, we were walking through the mall. She, she's my oldest daughter. And we walked by one of those arcades that malls have with the video games and the sounds and the lights. Allison was literally in agony. Graham was, dad, do you have some quarters? You know, I want to spend some time in here. Yeah. So I saw how my kids were so different. And then we're on a walk a week later. We're through these beautiful woods in the Pacific Northwest. We come across this waterfall and Allison turns to me, dad. Wouldn't this be the best place to have a quiet time? Hmm. And and so it was just my kids kind of got it because I wrote it young that there are different ways yeah. that they like to meet with the Lord. Yeah. Um, and so with my son, more of discipleship, we read through books together and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I think if you do that in ministry, you're just aware, even if yeah. you don't necessarily get a particular pathway, yeah. you can affirm it, identify it and yeah. teach it. Yeah. And and that affirmation can mean so much. Yeah. Uh, hey, tell me about that. Oh, that's exciting. Because yeah. then a child can become a teacher. Uh, and and when a child is a teacher, they own it. They get excited yeah. about it. And it tends to grow. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, as you're saying that, I think it also we're also this year 
of taking our entire church board through Sacred Pathways um, and over a six month period. So we're gonna be immersed in this. Um, and uh, when people start traveling again, we I, we love to get you out here, try to do it every year or two, but it'd be fun to have you come back out and, and uh, help us go a little deeper into all this. But our board's gonna walk through this. And again, I think it's gonna help me look at our board members and be able to learn how I can help encourage them to walk with Jesus, become more and more intimate with him. And so, well, let, let's wrap up with these, um, these words, you know, one, some, and all. So as Sherry and I were working with you on this, uh, on, on the materials and helping to help to create, you know, craft a curriculum that would really catch the spirit of what you're doing, the thought kind of hit me in the writing process um, that, that there, you know, that if we thought in this term, okay, I need to find one, one sacred pathway that really just, just naturally propels me to the Lord. And I know it's kind of like, it's kind of like, if I got to get close to Jesus, I jump on that path. And it's like one of those moving pathways in the, in the jets. That's, the, the, that's the highway. Zip, I'm going, right? right. That's the highway. Um, and then there'll be some of the pathways that I'll go, you know, I think I can connect with God and I can explore that and experiment a little bit and try something and go, man, that really, that really does get me in God's presence. Cause that's our desires to come before the one we love and the one who loves us. But then the all is to say, I should understand all of them. And this is the key that hit me and bless all of them, cheer all of them on. Because it's yes. easy for somebody who is an activist to say, oh, you know, you're you're an ascetic or you're a contemplative. You you, just, you go over there and you just don't want to do anything. And they're saying, dude, do nothing. I'm doing everything over here. And, this is, with the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and so, so if we can understand all the pathways and then be able to cheer people on like you did with your kids, uh, whether it's our spouse and you do a lot, obviously, in marriage and, fa- you know, sacred parenting, sacred marriage. But if we can cheer our spouse on, even if they're different than us, if we can cheer our kids on, if we can cheer the people in the church on. And so so just speak to that concept of, OK, one one pathway that's kind of uh, uh, just I know it's a good natural way to connect me to God. Some of them I'll be able to probably utilize and will really be helpful. Some won't, but all of them I should understand and really bless and cheer other people on. How does that concept fit for you as just kind of a, as a closing thought in terms of how people would look at these pathways? Well, I would use the uh, example I kind of used before about last week. I'm not sure when this will be aired, but the night of yeah. the riots. Then when I said, I need a good sermon. Yeah. It, it's like, you know, if you're really hungry, this is the restaurant I'm going to go to. Yeah. If I want, if I'm not that hungry, if I want to explore, there are a couple other restaurants and then. Of course, with my wife's restaurant, I'm not going to get full because it's going to be just vegetables and organic farm to market stuff. But I'll, I'll go there sometimes for a date night. So for me, it's understanding when my heart is unsettled or my yeah. soul is feeling empty. This is the pathway that yeah. takes me right. That's why I love to read the Christian classics. It's why I'm looking for good sermons at time. Yeah. On the other hand, at times. I need to get outdoors. I mean, there's a couple others. I, I need to get alone. And the other reason it's helpful to know is so that you don't take it personally as a spouse. If a spouse is married to an ascetic or a contemplative, they will be closest to the Lord when you're not around them. Yeah. And that's okay. It doesn't yeah. mean that that there's something wrong with your marriage. Yeah. Uh, it's just if you let them connect with God, they're going to be a better spouse. They're going to yeah. be a better parent. Yeah. They're going to be more pleasant to be around. Yeah. On vacation, you've got to give them that room yeah. to get away. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, if you're married to an enthusiast, they're going to want to pray with you, right? Yeah. And they're going to want to go to those all-night praise meetings. And, and and so it's it's understanding that, okay, this is how I serve my family's faith. Um, so you know how you best connect with the Lord. You know how your family members best connect with the Lord. You support, you encourage each other, yeah. and you celebrate each other. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I love it. And, and, you know, I really, I, I believe, and so I'll speak first to the, to the, to the people following the shoreline conversations, following our podcast that are connected with the shoreline. Uh, I I'm so excited to be walking with you for, for a month's time through these concepts going deeper. Uh, and, and most of, you know, Gary, cause Gary's been a, a regular uh, presence with our coming to be a part of shoreline on, you know, on, on hopefully a year, every year, year and a half. So for our shoreline folks, uh, we'll be looking forward to walking through that. Know that your staff is walking through it. Know that your board is walking through it. We're trying to, we just want to meet Jesus and follow him as we lead and reach our community with the good news of Jesus. To all those folks listening who are, uh, who are, you know, connected with Gary and his ministry, and maybe you picked this up because you know him. Uh, if you haven't dipped your toe into the sacred pathways uh, part of Gary's work, I just want to say, check it out. I know that I think that Zonovan just is doing a new release of the book, I believe, along yes, with the yeah, small yeah, group guide. Got a new case, so, my yeah. favorite cover yet. 
Yeah, so a new release and with some with some new some new things in there, and I think some new uh, revised questions for reflection. So um, it's 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 absolutely a, be a blessing for you, and and even if you lead a small group, walk through this with some folks, get the curriculum, and do that. Uh, and Gary, I'd like you just to close us with a prayer yeah. that all those listening will will just will just meet the God who loves them and the God that they love in whatever pathway God's designed for them, and discover fresh new ways to do that. If you if you'd close us in a prayer, that'd be great. Yeah. Lord, I just pray that your spirit could encourage everyone listening to this right now that if they've felt a lack of desire, a lack of passion, that they would understand it's not the who. It's not that they have a problem with you. It's very likely the how. The way they've been trying to connect with you may just not fit who you designed them to be. So I pray for a spirit of freedom. I pray for a spirit of excitement. I pray that you would open doors. Lord, this book I know and and the video series, it's just a spark that your spirit is so powerful and creative that if somebody starts on these paths, they'll explore things. They'll see avenues and trails I don't know exists. Kevin Mm. has never known has existed, but your spirit will reveal that. We pray that you would pour out on us a new passion for you, a new hunger for you, a new light that we could see you and find you as we seek you. Lord, you are a God who is not hiding. You yeah. want us to pursue you. you. You say that you look over the earth for someone who will devote themselves to be close to you. We want to be those people. And I just pray, Lord, in the coming weeks that you would give us the tools to see you as you are and that you would be glorified Lord, and that our hearts would be filled with your glorious presence, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yeah. And Gary, thank you. And for all those all those viewing and watching, thank you for joining us. If this has been a blessing to you and if it really has touched your heart, uh, send the link to somebody else and just encourage them uh, with this message. And if you read the book and love it, get one and share it with a friend. And uh, let's, let's, let's keep getting closer to God and let's help others do the same. So God bless you. And we'll see you in the next Shorelines Conversation. Whether you're watching on our YouTube channel or listening on your podcast app, make sure to subscribe to hear more of our weekly episodes. Thanks for listening.